All right, so we're going to be talking about the for each loop in PowerShell, and the for each loop will allow you to run a set of code um, across a list of items. So right here, I have a variable that's going to contain a bunch of uh, service information. So if I run that, and then I show you my services variable, I have all kinds of stuff in there that I can work with now. So now I want to run through all of these different services and do something with them. Uh, so I'm going to use the for each and then after you write for each um, you're going to need two variables inside of the parentheses and they are separated by the word in and uh, I guess the best way to think about it is just to, to read it aloud uh, for each um, variable item in services so our first variable can be whatever we want if we want it to be for each service in services which would obviously make more sense we can do that it's it's basically just the description that you're gonna use um, for each item in the rest of uh, this for each loop so uh, a lot of people like to, to make it very s small. Uh, some people like to make it very descriptive. Um, for the purposes of this example, I'm going to make it silly. So, for each potato <coughs> in the variable services, I want you to run these evaluations. And so, what it'll do is, e every for every item, uh, potato will become the new item uh, when it when it loops through uh, so it'll it'll first um, it'll first become uh, this this item it'll be the first one up here and then once it finishes running this set of code it'll it'll change to the next item and then it'll run that code on that item as well so this is basically just a description variable and uh, this is the variable containing the objects that you want to run the code on so what I have happening here is two if statements and if the uh, current items status and uh, I can I can use these properties to identify because it's uh, a property of um, the get service object if if the status matches um, running then I want you to write out that item because this is this is our item here uh, and I want it to be green but if it is stopped I want it to be red so if I run this code here you'll see it outputs all the names now color coordinated based on what their status is S so that's a little bit easier because we uh, just have one column to look at and it's easy to identify what's going on what's on and what's off so that's a pretty cool feature um, but you can actually do it a little bit easier than this thanks to pipelining and PowerShell so I have this example here and I'm gonna run it off the bat for you and you'll notice it does the exact same thing so what's happening is I'm running get service and then I'm passing the service objects directly to the for each and um, uh, the way the for each commandlet is designed um, you don't need to provide those variable information uh, it, it does it automatically um, and so I have my same set of code in here so those are two ways that you can run the for each loop um, you can either grab all the items first and then uh, set up your loop here or you can um, if if uh, if for each can accept it then you can pipeline it directly to for each it, it may not be able to accept um, everything from every commandlet so depending on your situation you have these two two methods here so I'm going to show you um, 
an example of how to use for each that's a little bit more practical. Um, here's, here's a case where I have a folder with um, a bunch of crap. So it's called lots of stuff and I just have all these empty files in here. I gave them different extensions uh, and there's different levels. So I have all these text files, these EXEs and it's just it looks very messy doesn't it well let's say somebody told me hey I want you to delete all the PHP files out of that lots of stuff folder and I'm like oh crap I don't want to sit here all day you know clicking files and deleting them that's not a whole lot of fun is it so we're gonna use the uh, the power of scripting to make that happen a little bit quicker so I'm using the first method method I showed you and I've got a variable called stuff here and I'm assigning it um, the get child item, which will grab all the items in a folder I specify. So I'm giving it that lots of stuff folder. And then I give it the recurse um, uh, parameter because I want it to go down all the levels. So I'm going to go ahead and run just this line first. And then I'll show you what's in stuff. And it's listing all those folders and everything that I showed you before. So now let's go down to our for each loop. Um, so I'm saying for each, and I've got my two variables here, and you'll notice this time it's called item because you can call it whatever you want, um, and stuff because this is my variable that contains stuff. So let's come down to the code over here. Uh, now, in order for me to... Um, delete everything I need to do two things first I need to identify which folder I'm in um, and which item that I want to delete so right here uh, every through through every item that it's gonna check which is every item in that folder I'm first having it create a variable called parent and I'm assigning that parent variable the directory name of our item because uh, once again this is this is the current item that we're looking at so I'm getting the current directory of the item now I come to my if statement and I'm saying if that items extension the uh, the extension is PHP then I want you to remove that item and inside here I have two variables now I have the parent and I have a backslash um, with item after it so uh, when when you have variables inside double quotes in PowerShell it expands the variables to whatever value is inside so this remove item commandlet um, will will remove uh, the item and it will know where to look for the item because I'm giving it to the folder that the item is in and I'm giving it the item name and it will only remove items with a dot PHP extension so let's run this set of code okay so I've run it now let's go look in our folder and would you look at that all the PHP files are gone no more so there is your real world practical example um, and that's pretty much for each loops so get at it thanks for watching <laughs>